1877, during the intense bone wars between rival paleontologists Othniel Charles Marsh and Edward Drinker Cope, a major discovery took place in Garden Park, Colorado. S.W. Sir Williston uncovered strange elongated vertebrae from a quarry which were sent to Yale. A year later, Marsh named the dinosaur Diplodocus, combining the Greek words diplos double and dokos beam in reference to the double-beamed bones beneath its tail, a feature that set it apart from all known dinosaurs at the time. From its discovery, Diplodocus sparked fascination among scientists and the public. Its long neck, whip-like tail, and massive but graceful body instantly became the poster image for what people imagined when they thought of dinosaurs. For decades, it was considered the longest dinosaur ever found, with some estimates suggesting lengths that seemed almost impossible for the time. The most famous species is Diplodocus carnegie, named after steel magnate Andrew Carnegie, who helped fund major fossil expeditions. A nearly complete skeleton, affectionately called Dippy, was unearthed and sent to museums around Europe, making Diplodocus a global ambassador for dinosaur science. The original cast still stands in the Carnegie Museum of Natural History and remains one of the most visited dinosaur exhibits in the world. Another species, Diplodocus halorum, discovered from less complete remains has been proposed to be even larger. Early estimates suggested it could reach 33 meters or more, possibly weighing up to 80 tons. Though these figures are debated, they highlight just how massive these creatures could be and how little we might still know about their full range of sizes. In the 90s, fossilized skin impressions were discovered showing thin, pointed spines that likely ran along the back or tail. These spines, similar to those seen in modern iguanas, could reach lengths of 18 centimeters and may have served as visual displays or even for protection. This new detail led to more dramatic reconstructions of Diplodocus like those seen in the documentary Walking with Dinosaurs, presenting a creature closer to a dragon than previously imagined. For many years, scientists believed Diplodocus might have been semi-aquatic, using its long neck to breathe while mostly submerged, but newer studies have shown this was unlikely. Its chest cavity would not have been able to handle the pressure of deep water, and fossil trackways indicate that it walked on land most likely across wide floodplains and forests. One of the most striking physical traits of Diplodocus is its incredibly long and flexible tail. Paleontologists have theorized that this tail wasn't just for balance. It may have acted like a bullwhip, capable of producing cracking sounds to scare off predators or communicate with others in the herd. It might also have had a role in mating displays or thermal regulation, though more evidence is needed. Another unique feature lies in its teeth. Instead of broad grinding teeth like other herbivores, Diplodocus had long peg-like teeth only at the front of its mouth. These were ideal for stripping leaves rather than chewing. The dinosaur likely swallowed its food whole, relying on internal fermentation chambers to break down tough plant matter similar to how cows digest grass. Interestingly, this design helped Diplodocus conserve energy. Its teeth didn't need to be replaced frequently, unlike other herbivores that constantly wore them down. Everything about its body seemed tailored to efficient, low-energy foraging. Even the internal structure of its neck bone supported this. The vertebrae were hollow and filled with air sacs, much like modern birds, which made the neck lighter and improved breathing efficiency. This system allowed Diplodocus to get oxygen continuously supporting its enormous body without exhausting itself. However, one major scientific debate centers on how Diplodocus held its neck. Early reconstructions showed it rearing up like a giraffe, but detailed analysis of the vertebrae revealed limited vertical flexibility. Most evidence now supports that it kept its neck low and nearly horizontal, perfectly aligned with its role as a ground-level feeder. Overall, Diplodocus was not a slow-plotting swamp-dweller. It was a highly specialized land-based giant.
Its anatomy, from its whip-like tail to its energy-efficient neck and diet, paints a picture of an animal perfectly suited to its environment. This ancient giant didn't just survive, it thrived, and its fossil legacy continues to fuel the imagination of scientists and dinosaur lovers around the world. The more scientists examined Diplodocus, the more they uncovered details that reshaped how this dinosaur lived and moved. One of the most debated aspects is the posture and function of its neck. For decades, paleontologists assumed that Diplodocus, like a giraffe, could lift its head high into the air to feed from tall trees. However, further studies of its cervical vertebrae showed that the neck had limited flexibility in the vertical direction. Instead of rising high, it likely extended outward almost parallel to the ground. This finding dramatically changed assumptions about Diplodocus's feeding behavior. Rather than browsing treetops, it was more likely a low-level feeder stripping soft vegetation like ferns and horsetails close to the ground. Its long neck would have allowed it to cover a wide feeding area without needing to move its entire body a major advantage when dealing with a huge frame. Supporting this feeding strategy was a powerful neutral ligament, a strong band of tissue running along the neck which helped hold up its head without constant muscle effort. This structure is also seen in large mammals like horses and cows and it would have allowed Diplodocus to conserve energy. Further aiding its biology, the vertebrae in its neck were not solid. They were filled with air sacs that made the neck lighter and connected to the lungs, allowing a bird-like respiratory system with unidirectional airflow. This efficient breathing would have been crucial for such a massive animal. Another point of fascination was its circulatory system. In the early 1990s, researchers calculated that if Diplodocus held its head upright, it would need a heart over 1.5 tons in weight just to pump blood to its brain. Such a heart would have been biologically impossible. This gave further support to the idea that Diplodocus kept its head and neck low, reducing strain on its cardiovascular system and enabling more efficient energy use. Many early reconstructions also portrayed Diplodocus as a semi-aquatic animal living in swamps and using its nostrils to breathe while submerged. But this image has since been debunked. Its enormous body would have been crushed by water pressure, making underwater breathing impossible. Additionally, fossilized footprints and sediment analysis prove that Diplodocus lived on dry land, moving across floodplains and woodland areas. Its long tail remains one of its most mysterious and multifunctional features. Some paleontologists believe it could have been used as a sonic weapon cracking through the air like a bullwhip to scare predators or signal herd members. Others speculate that the tail played a role in thermoregulation social displays or mating behavior. Regardless of the exact function its tail gave Diplodocus, both a visual edge and possible defense tools in a dangerous world. Another anatomical curiosity lies in its unique dental structure. Unlike other sauropods with broader teeth for grinding, Diplodocus had narrow pencil-like teeth only at the front of its mouth. These teeth were ideal for raking soft plants off branches. There was no evidence of chewing. Instead, food was likely swallowed whole and digested later through fermentation in large gut chambers, much like cows digest grass with the help of microbes. This feeding method meant Diplodocus didn't need to spend energy constantly replacing worn out teeth. While some herbivores like hadrosaurs cycled through hundreds of teeth during their lifetimes, Diplodocus kept things simpler. Its teeth wore down slowly and efficiently in harmony with its slow, methodical eating habits. Some researchers also explored how its neck might have moved during moments of alertness or communication. A 2009 study proposed that Diplodocus could slightly lift its neck to scan surroundings or interact with other members of its group. Though its bones limited extreme movement, 
soft tissue might have allowed greater flexibility than previously assumed. This adds a layer of behavioral complexity to what was once thought to be a slow, unintelligent giant. All of these discoveries reshape how we view Diplodocus. It wasn't just big, it was brilliantly adapted. Its anatomy tells a story of efficiency, a creature that mastered its environment not through strength or speed, but by being finely tuned to its niche. The lightweight structure, efficient respiration-tailored diet, and energy-saving design all point to a dinosaur that was built for endurance and survival. Rather than an outdated relic lumbering through swamps, Diplodocus now emerges as a highly specialized land giant capable of thriving in the challenging ecosystems of the late Jurassic. Every new fossil and study continues to refine our understanding, showing that there's much more to this dinosaur than just its size. Diplodocus wasn't just an anatomical marvel, it was also a dominant member of the late Jurassic world, belonging to the family Diplodocidae. It represented a group of long-necked, long-tailed, and relatively lightweight sauropods. Unlike the towering, deep-chested Brachiosaurus or the colossal Argentinosaurus Diplodocus, thrived by being long, low, and built for balance and efficiency. Its closest relatives included genera like Barosaurus caetoteticus and Galliomopus, which shared similar body structures. Together, these dinosaurs made up the subfamily Diplodocini, while other sauropods like Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus were grouped under Apatosaurini. Fossils of these animals have been found across North America, Portugal, and Africa. Evidence of their wide distribution and evolutionary success during the Jurassic period. Most notably, Diplodocus is associated with the Morrison Formation, a fossil-rich layer of rock that stretches across the western United States. This formation, dating back 47 to 156 million years, preserves one of the most complete records of Jurassic ecosystems on Earth. Within it, Diplodocus shared its environment with a wide array of dinosaurs, including Stegosaurus, Camarasaurus, Allosaurus, and Ceratosaurus, along with flying reptiles, amphibians, and early mammals. In such a diverse and competitive ecosystem, survival depended on specialization. While Brachiosaurus reached upward to browse from tall trees, Diplodocus adapted to feed at ground level. Its long, laterally flexible neck allowed it to graze over a wide area without moving, reducing energy use, and minimizing competition for food. This ecological separation, known as niche partitioning, allowed multiple giant herbivores to coexist peacefully. Despite its size, Diplodocus wasn't invincible. Apex predators like Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus roamed the Morrison Plains and likely targeted young or injured individuals. However, adult Diplodocus would have been a formidable challenge. Its sheer size, whip-like tail, and possible herd behavior would have discouraged even the boldest predator. In fact, fossil evidence shows few adult skeletons with signs of predator damage, suggesting that healthy adults were rarely attacked. Herding behavior might have been one of Diplodocus's key survival strategies. Fossil trackways and bone beds suggest that they moved in groups possibly migrating in search of fresh vegetation. Traveling in herds would have helped protect juveniles and increased survival rates, much like how elephants or wildebeest move today. These migrations likely followed seasonal changes, ensuring access to abundant food and water. One of the most impressive aspects of Diplodocus was its rapid growth rate. Like other sauropods, it reached massive size in a surprisingly short time. Studies of bone histology reveal growth rings that suggest sustained, accelerated development more like birds and mammals than cold-blooded reptiles. This fast growth minimized the window of vulnerability when young dinosaurs were small and more likely to be attacked. The number and variety of Diplodocus fossils discovered also tell us how successful the genus was. Paleontologists have uncovered specimens at nearly every life stage, from hatchlings 
to full-grown adults, allowing scientists to piece together its entire growth cycle with a level of detail unmatched by most other dinosaurs. In the public imagination, Diplodocus has become one of the most familiar and beloved dinosaurs. Its image has appeared in countless textbooks, museums, documentaries, and toys. The nickname Dippy is instantly recognizable, especially in the UK, where a replica of the Carnegie skeleton was displayed for decades at the Natural History Museum in London. Its popularity has helped raise interest in paleontology and science education for generations. However, even a dinosaur as well known as Diplodocus hasn't escaped scientific debate. Over the years, paleontologists have argued over how many valid species exist within the genus. For instance, D. Hyi was eventually reassigned to a separate genus, Galeomopus, after closer anatomical analysis. Meanwhile, the original species, D. longus, was labeled a nomen dubium, due to fragmentary remains. A petition to reassign the type species to D. Carnegie, which has a complete skeleton, was submitted to the International Commission on Zoological Nomenclature, but was ultimately rejected. These classification challenges are a reminder that paleontology is an ever-evolving science. Each fossil discovery adds to our understanding, but can also raise new questions. Working with incomplete bones and fragmented skeletons, paleontologists must constantly revisit old assumptions and refine their frameworks. Diplodocus is a prime example of how even the most iconic species can still surprise us. At its core, the story of Diplodocus is one of evolutionary balance. It was never the strongest, fastest, or heaviest, but it didn't need to be. It thrived by mastering its environment through specialization efficiency and social behavior. It avoided direct competition, minimized energy use, and developed features that kept it alive in a world full of giants and danger. Far from being a sluggish brute, Diplodocus was a masterpiece of natural design. Its legacy lives on, not just in fossilized bones, but in the curiosity and wonder it inspires today. Every time someone stands in front of its towering skeleton or sees it brought to life in animation, they glimpse the remarkable world that once was and the scientific journey still unfolding.